Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Rakdos Burn deck, which is one of the more fun and exciting decks that I've uh, played since the new expansion dropped. And it is built around Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, 2 mana for a legendary Elder Giant. When Kroxa enters a battlefield we have to sacrifice it unless it escaped. And when Kroxa enters a battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card, and then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses 3 life. So if they discard a land card, they lose 3, but also if they're empty-handed, they still lose life. So Kroxa is still very effective against an opponent who is on empty. And then later we can escape Kroxa for double black and double red, exiling 5 other cards from our graveyard. Kroxa will enter the battlefield, the trigger will happen once again, and we get to keep the 6-6 six, six Elder Giant, and then whenever Kroxa attacks, the trigger will happen once again. So a very powerful card that can end the game in a hurry. Now how do we enable Kroxa, since of course getting 5 cards in the graveyard is not trivial? Well, our deck is filled with cheap instants and sorceries that will naturally end up in the graveyard, and this deck can pretty reliably play Kroxa out of the graveyard with escape on turn 5, and looking at the curve, it might not seem like we have a very cheap uh, curve of instants and sorceries, but if you take a closer look, we have 12 spectacle cards that we can play for a single mana, for drill bit, for light up the stage and for secure the critics. Spectacle meaning that if the opponent lost life this turn, we can uh, play these spells for their spectacle cost. And then the rest of the deck is dedicated to making sure we can enable spectacle, that's what most of these cards are for, so we can make sure we can cast all these cards for one mana. And then we've got some nice draw engines to help us cycle through the deck and find Kroxar reliably, and that's where the Reveler and the Crusader come in handy. So it's a very satisfying deck to play because the sequencing is so important with your spectacle cards, so it feels like most of your victories are hard-earned. So let's take a look at the entire list at one mana. We've got our Spectacle Enablers, and Spears Pure is a pretty good one. It's not an impressive card by itself. One mana for an O2 Defender that we can tap to deal one damage to each player, so it's symmetrical, also deals one damage to us. But it is a way to enable Spectacle, regardless of the opponent's board state. So if they have a bunch of blockers, and we were just playing some random 1-1 haste creature, then of course that would no longer be able to uh, Spectacle our cards in future turns, whereas the Spear Spear is uh, always uh, good to go. And then maybe the most controversial inclusion is the Vicious Rumors, which is uh, not typically a very powerful card in Constructed. One mana for a sorcery, deals one damage to each opponent, and each opponent discards a card, and then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard, and we gain one life. But the important part here is that Vicious Rumors enables Spectacle for one mana, since it deals one damage to each opponent, and then it also makes the opponent discard a card, which is a nice upside. So we're still kind of trading one for one, but we're also getting a 1 mana Spectacle Enabler, and it's also 1 mana Sorcery that will end up in our graveyard to enable the uh, escape on Kroxa later in the game. So it helps us fill several roles in the deck, and I was even playing the uh, new Fruit of uh, Tisserus at some point instead of the Vicious Rumors, which was also an option since later in the game we can also escape this to maybe burn the opponent out, but the graveyard was already pretty taxed by Kroxa, so instead I went with the Vicious Rumors, which at least still trades for a card in the opponent's hand in the early turns. And then we have the full playset of Shock, which of course can deal with small creatures from the opponent, but can also enable Spectacle for one red mana. And then at 2 mana is where the fun starts. Of course we've got our full playset of Kroxa, a card that we're not often going to play on turn 2. It's more like a turn 3, turn 4 play alongside something else. Can also potentially enable Spectacle if the opponent discards a land, although you can't really count on it, so we still need the other Spectacle enablers in the deck. And then one of the more important cards in the deck is Stormfist Crusader, 2 mana for a menacing human knight that says at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life. So the Stormfist Crusader is also symmetrical, both players get to draw and take one damage. But of course the Crusader also helps us enable Spectacle, because the opponent lost one life, so it's very good there. And it also helps us draw a lot of cards. Our deck is also playing four main deck copies of Drillbit, which can be a nice targeted discard spell. So if we let the opponent draw a few extra cards with Crusader, we can still potentially take away their best card with our Drillbit for just one mana, which again helps us enable the Graveyard for escape. And then of course a 2-2 Menace can also attack and block and get in some damage. So we can kind of break the symmetry of the Crusader just because our deck is so cheap with all these 1 mana effects. So we can empty our hand faster than our opponent can in most circumstances. 
And then another nice card draw engine in the deck is a Rick's Mandy Reveler. So 2 mana for a 2-2 creature that also has Spectacle for 2, a black and a red. And when the Reveler enters the battlefield we have to discard a card and then draw a card. This is not optional, but it also means that if we're empty-handed and play Reveler, we discard a card, but we're empty-handed and then we still draw a card, so we get to draw a card for free. And if instead the 4 mana Spectacle cost was paid, we have to discard our entire hand and then draw 3 cards, but again if we're empty-handed or close to empty-handed, this can turn into a nice draw 3 effect as well as putting a 2-2 creature in play, so that's everything this deck wants to do. Also discarding cards, another way of fueling the graveyard for escape, so even if we discard a spell or land in the late game it's not too bad. And then rounding out to two drops, we also have two copies of Angras Rampage, giving us some additional interaction. Pretty versatile, can deal with creatures, artifacts or planeswalkers, but of course it's not always going to be great in every board state. If the opponent has a bunch of uh, small creatures, they can just sacrifice those instead of their large creature that we actually want to get rid of. But that's also where the cheap burn spells come in handy, like Shock and Secure the Critics, can maybe clear a path for the Rampage to get the opponent's larger creature but it's also mostly a nice answer to planeswalkers like Nyssa that tend to protect themselves pretty well by turning a land into a creature right away, but we can still get Nyssa with a 2 mana Rampage. And Rampage can also be quite good against the blue-white control decks where Dream Trawler might be their only creature in play, and then Rampage gets around the Hexproof from the Dream Trawler. And then our Spectacle cards, we already covered the Drill Bit, 1 mana for a targeted discard effect, and then we've got a Light of the Stage as another nice card draw effect. So between the Reveler, the Crusader and four copies of Light of the Stage, our deck does get to see a ton of cards, which is pretty strange for a red-black aggro deck, but here we are. So Spectacle for one red mana, exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. Light of the Stage is not often a card we want to play as soon as possible, it's much better a bit later in the game when we have more mana available, so we can make sure to cast both cards before they go away. And then Secure the Critics, one mana Spectacle to deal three damage to any target. But then of course even without Spectacle these cards are still potentially fine. And then going over the mana base it's definitely one of the weaker points of the deck, because we don't really want to be playing tap lands in this deck since we have so many cheap plays. But on the other hand, we need a few dual lands to make sure that our mana base is functional. So we're playing a split of two copies of Temple of Malice and two copies of Fabled Passage. Now Passage does have a bit of synergy with Croxa, since it puts a land in the graveyard, which helps for escape. But uh, of course it's not great if we play it in the early turns, where we need our mana to be untapped. And then two copies of Temple of Malice instead of four copies of Fable Passage, because our deck is also pretty color intensive. Sometimes we need to have access to uh, two black mana if we want to go Vicious Rumors into a Drill Bit to make the opponent discard. And other turns we might need double red to maybe play a Shock plus a Light of the Stage or Secure the Critics in the same turn. So that means that our lands sometimes need to be able to tap for both colors at once. And of course if we have only Fabled Passage as uh, one of our mana fixers that's not going to work. So that's why two copies of Temple of Malice as well. And of course a Scry one can be nice as well. And then at the rest of the mana base of course four Blood Crypts, then eight Mountains and six Swamps. Alright so that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright we're on the draw. Hands not particularly exciting, but probably still keepable. This coming into play tapped can definitely hurt us since we won't be able to drill bit on turn 2. And we also don't have any card draw engine, no crusaders or Rick's Maddy revelers or uh, light up the stages, but there's a reveler so that's good. So the sequencing here is probably going to be spear spear, fetch a swamp, play another spear spear and then turn 3 drill bit. Hushbringer we can easily shock before we play the reveler. Hushbringer could actually be good for us since if we find Croxa we get to keep it in play. So I don't necessarily want to kill it. Now the one card I'm afraid of is an Ajani's Pride Mate. But even if they Pride Mate and gain one I can still kill it with the Security Critics. So I think I'm fine doing this. And then we'll fetch a Swamp end of turn. It's gonna be Heliods. Alright, so now the Hushbringer will get out of range of the Shock but we can still Skewer it. And in this matchup I don't think I want to be randomly activating Spear Spewers unless we need Spectacle. Alright, so... We'll start... with the Drill Bits. A Johnny, and I'll say it probably need to take a Johnny. And then we'll finish off this 
Hushbringer before it gets too large. But it would have been pretty funny if we drew a Croxa here, because then we would have uh, kept the creature in play. And then we've got a Shock, which can deal with the Alsaid. And then the Reveler can help us refuel. So now do we Spear Spewer them? Could be okay to do so, since they don't have anything going on. Sure. But these are also the small decisions that uh, can win or lose a game. Sadly, we drew Crusader for the turn. So I can play Crusader and then play Reveler, which just draws the cards. Or I can play Reveler with Spectacle and then discard Crusader, draw three. Unclear what's better. Giving the opponent extra cards with Crusader when they're empty-handed might not be the best idea, so maybe I'm better off just drawing three myself and try and find a Croxa as soon as possible. Right, drill bit, rumors, Crusader. So now the Crusader is not as bad since we can manage the opponent's hands with our discard spells. Although we are stuck on single black. It's gonna be Gideon Blackblade. Sure. Let me lead the charge into darkness. Spewer doesn't deal damage to Planeswalker, sadly. Share in my light. So now I, I think I'm again off activating Spear Spewer. More drill bits. So we'll start attacking Gideon. And play Crusader. That was a good hit. Could even chum block Gideon here with a spewer since we've got another one. Yeah, that seems fine. Also puts an extra card in the graveyard in case we find Croxa. Not sure if they were better off giving Gideon lifelink or making a token with castle. Puts a counter on Heliots. Alright, so... Both players draw a card, but we can make them discard the one they drew. Not a ruffler. So... I guess we can Vicious Rumors. Kill Gideon. And then I can play a Reveler, just discarding a drill bit here. Alright. I could Rampage to make them sack Gideon, but I would rather keep it in hand, I think. Heliot is going to be difficult for us to deal with. So that's definitely going to be a problem. There are definitely situations where you sometimes just play drill bit, even if the opponent's empty-handed, just to put an extra card in the graveyard. But we've got eight cards in graveyard, so we should be fine if we draw Croxa. Uh, again, do we use Spear Spewer or not? Now I'm again leaning yes, since Rampage deals with Daxos nicely, and we'll be pretty far ahead on board. So we'll uh, drill bits, have a look. Just a lands. Get in for six and have a shock at the ready. Yeah, 
healer shock we can shock. They can still make a token, but they won't be able to give the token lifelink. I don't have to shock now, I could take my draw step first, but pretty likely to end up killing the hawk anyway. And I probably should have used Spear Spear end of turn there, forgot to. So they should have been at 11. It's probably not going to make a huge difference. There's Croxa, right on time. Perfect. So hit for 6. Might see them uh, make a token and jump with it. Or they might keep it. If they have a land in hand, they're dead. It was a Duxo, so they're still in the game, but a 2 life facing Croxa. So yeah, if we remember to use the Spear Spear end of turn, they would have been dead here. That's okay. And Jani Sprite Mate, that's fine. Spear Spear can put him to one, and then Stormfist Crusader will end the game. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Only one mana. Don't think this will work. This might work. And then I can get rid of a Reveler or a Mountain. Probably a Reveler here. We've got Crusader as another card draw effect. Fetch up a Swamp end of turn. Facing a Cauldron Familiar, do we see the Oven? Another Swamp, so my opponent seems to be on Mono Black. And Remorse to take a look at my hand. Take Slide of the Stage. That's fine. So... Definitely want to Drill Bit here. So we can take the Oven, put on missing lands as well. So I can take Oven or Fenlurker. Fenlurker also makes Drag to the Underworld cheaper. Oven is good with a cat, but it's not too annoying when we have menace creatures to attack past the cats. So I think I still take Fenlurker. Which also lets them double block Crusader. And just play another one. So they can kill one of my Crusaders. Or they can play an Oven, which is what they did. Alright, I guess we're just spectacling a Reveler here. Since my entire hand's pretty bad. Could also Reveler just discarding a land, play Vicious Rumors. But I would prefer to draw three, I think. Also fills the graveyard nicely in case we find Croxa. Got some burn. So the opponent's got a lot of cards in hand, but they're limited in what they can do. A drag to the Underworld costing 2 mana could definitely be very relevant this game. That's also why I like taking the Fenlurker. 
So it's going to be a murder strider on defense. That's fine. Alright, Rampage can also deal with the Oven for what it's worth. What if instead I make them sacrifice a creature? That also works, because then the Crusaders go unblocked. And then I can finish them off with 8 points of burn. So the cat's gone. And just attack with Crusaders. If we screw the critics the Murder Strider, they could sack it to the oven and bring back Familiar. So I think we have to do it this way. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and seems quite good. Facing turn one, I'll set of life's bounty. So is this mono white or maybe green white enchantments? It looks like green white enchantments. So the creature we really want to kill is the Tessan Champion. If we can keep them off creatures entirely, that would be decent since then their auras will just sit in their hand. I might still play the Crusader here just to get the cards flowing, but we also have a double light of the stage. So maybe we'll just start with the light of the stage here. Alright, sadly found two two drops, so that's not what we were hoping for. Now I could still secure the critics and then next turn use Rampage to get their other creature. Don't actually know which of these two we want to secure. Probably the Envoy. because the uh, cost reduction can be quite relevant. All that glitters. Okay. So they're hoping we don't have black mana or they have another Alsate in hand. Nope. All right. So just going to rampage here and then light up the stage again. Yeah, I guess not having to show them that we have a Swamp in hand could matter. So I'll say this dealt with. Sadly, we lose a Reveler this turn, but we still have a lot of card draw effects to work with. So our opponent doesn't have any creatures, so their hand might just be all Auras. In which case, I don't necessarily need to drill bits this turn, but I could go Crusader, Light of a Stage, plus maybe Shock before it goes away. Or they might have a creature, but they didn't want to play it into the Shock. But then, what else are they holding? I think we start with the Light of the Stage again. There's Croxa. I think we'll save Croxa for next turn. And then for now just go Crusader plus Shock. And 
And then next turn we can go drill bits, check out their hands. Alright. Sadly, Sitas and Champion makes an appearance. That's a scary one. So finding a secure the critics here would be nice. Start with drill bits. They're gonna blessing the champion to protect it. Sure. And the Hydro's Growth and Siona. So we just get to take both here thanks to Croxa. And we can hit for two. Playing the Blessing was a little bit questionable, but I guess they wanted to play around a sorcery speed burn spell like uh, Skewer the Critics. And now Crocs is in the graveyards, and we should be able to escape next turn. We are at 11, and Aura deck can deal pretty big chunks of damage out of nowhere, so I'm not sure if I'm supposed to activate Spewer here. I think I'm leaning no. We're also taking a bit of damage from Crusader. Rampage, not as good as it appears because of their Castle Ardenvale. Now I could still attack with Crusader, they might double block, and then Rampage deals with Champion, and I think that's something I'm happy with if that happens. Because then we can deal with the token and the Champion. Opponent decides to take it. So we'll escape Croxa. And then... Probably just use the Vicious Rumors here. And hope they don't have any enchantments. Alright, they had a uh, Sentinel's Ice in hand, which sadly they will be able to get back from the graveyard. And yeah, Vicious Rumors, the putting a card in the opponent's graveyard is often a drawback in today's standards with so many graveyard synergies. So if it didn't have that line of text, it would be even better. Opponent did not make a token end of turn, I believe, so maybe they forgot. And yeah, they're gonna pay the price here if they don't find another creature. I'm happy jumping with the Spears Pure. And then do we activate it? So my point will take one, two, three. Yeah, pretty sure they're dead. Sacrifice a creature, please. Trigger Croxa. Take eight and Spear Spear for the win. All right, sweet. Well, that was a tricky game to navigate, but uh, yeah, with them forgetting that one token made a very big difference in the end. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? It's okay, not amazing. Passage makes it a little bit worse. Don't have double black for drill bit and rumors in the same turn, but I guess we can shock plus drill bits. Yeah, I'll try it. And just start by fetching a swamp here. Alright, so are we into shock plus drill bits? Not really. I could just crocs at them now. Because I kind of want to keep the Reveler for Spectacle. Since we don't have another card draw engine. Ooh. Repeated reverberations. Their opponent's playing a spicy deck here. 
All right, so now I can rumors plus drill bits. Start with the rumors. So yeah, there are on the reverberation, sundering stroke, maybe with uh, fires of invention to let them cast them. And yeah, there's a fires and a stroke. Stroke is pretty far away, so I'm okay taking fires. And then we've got four cards in graveyards. So we're getting pretty close to uh, escaping Croxa. I could shock them end of turn. I think I'll wait. And then just Raveler discard Rampage. Don't think my opponent's playing many creatures. All right, Crusader's nice. They probably have the four mana sweeper now that I think about it, dealing four to each creature. But uh, yeah, that's fine. Then we get to escape Croc if they played here. They've got white mana in there too, Aurelia. It's a little unexpected. Double shock and a Raveler, which I could spectacle. I think I'm okay just attacking with all. And then we can double shock Aurelia if they block Raveler. Or I can just get Croxa back right now. And yeah, maybe that's actually better. This card's a land, down to 13. And there's a Fires of Invention. But uh, we shredded their hand apart, so they don't have many of their combo pieces left. Resurgence to get to attack steps. Okay, that's pretty scary. But... We can uh, empty their hand here, thanks to Rumors and Croxa. C8. Yeah, I guess they're just dead here if they don't block Croxa. Crusader has Menace, so can block that one. All rumors first, just to figure out what her last card was for science. All right. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Hopefully Crusader survives. And I'm probably okay keeping up shock in case we need to kill a mana creature or one drop. So facing maybe a control deck. Charming Prince, alright, never mind. Can take that out with a shock maybe. And drill bit is perfect to have a look. I'll light up the stage first in case we find another drill bit with it. And before playing our land drop. Alright, so next turn I can Fabled Passage and Croxa. So for now, probably Drill Bit plus Shock. Could also Vicious Rumors plus Drill Bit. Both are fine. And then probably take Teferi here. Yeah, I think I'm okay shocking the Charming Prince. So blue-white, probably Thassa, enter the battlefield, trigger deck. Which 
Charming Prince gains some life. So we can fetch a swamp, play Croxa, and then play double Spear Spear, I guess. And next turn we should be able to escape Croxa. Although, let's see, five cards. See, so yeah, next turn I can go Vicious Rumors plus Escape Croxa. Seems fine. Think, uh, I guess I could jump with the Spear Spear here. Also helps me fill the graveyards, and my opponent's about to gain a lot of life since it presumably they have another guard mage in hand. Could also just have a sweeper here, shatter the sky, in which case jumping is fine. Nah, just another guard mage. Because we can block the flying creatures, which they have cavalier and guard mage. So I kind of need to manage how much damage we take. Skewer's not bad. So you can secure guard mage and then play Crocs out of the graveyard. Seems fine. get in for two. And then I'm not sure yet if we're using Spear Spear end of turn or not. Alright, they did have Shattered Sky after all, that's too bad. Yeah, I guess I'm more into using Spear Spear now. At least we do get to draw cards. And then Rampage can deal with the Cavalier if they play it. So for now, let's see, four cards. We're not too far away from getting Croxa back. In order to shatter the sky, discard it. And then we can Rumors plus a Crusader here, since we can't quite escape Croxa now. Elite Guard Mage gone. Can take a look at their graveyard here. Alright, let's uh, Rampage. Oh no, should have tapped my mana better. Because now we can Vicious Rumors plus Croxa. Oh well, I guess we'll save it for next turn. get in for two. Glass Caskets, good answer to Croxa since it is a two drop, so it can get exiled by the Caskets. And Prison Realm for Crusader. Alright, I guess now we don't have much going on, but we do still have a Croxa in the graveyards. So, actually not casting the Vicious Rumors last turn could have cost us big time, since it might have been one of these removal spells that they would have discarded. I'll keep the Rumors in hand in case they end up with a card stranded in hand. So yeah, that is unfortunate. The auto-tapper didn't do me any favors there. So, pretty far away from uh, 
escaping Croxa even if I put these two in the graveyard. So I might be better off uh, keeping both still. Vicious Rumors especially can enable Spectacle, which is quite relevant. Sample to Scry. This would be a nice spot for a Light of the Stage or a uh, Rixmati Raveler. Alright, so now they might have a removal spell stranded in hand, so we'll drill bits. Take a Prison Realm and play Crusader. And then I think I hold the Rumors, and then next turn we can maybe get rid of an extra card that they draw with the Crusader. So Crusader plus Rumors is pretty synergistic too, in a sense. Because even if they're empty-handed in their turn, they'll draw cards that we can make them discard. So, can't quite escape Croxa yet. They will be able to scry with their uh, castle. And they are down to four, so... Not too far off getting uh, burnt out. The fairy bounces Crusader. Secure the critics. Yeah, I think I'll uh, keep that. Alright, let's see if they can deal with Crusader or gain some life. Top, top. That's not a good sign. Thassa is still acceptable. I guess that taps down Crusader, but we just care about to one damage. Sure, so Thassa taps down Crusader. And a spectacled secure the critics to end the game. Alright, so our small mishap with our mana didn't end up uh, costing us the game at least. And we got to see Croc in action, so... Yeah, that was a pretty fun game, and overall I've been enjoying playing this deck quite a lot. Probably my favorite out of uh, Theros so far. So if you've got the cards for it, definitely give it a try, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily spend wild cards on it, expecting it to be the best deck in standard. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.